it's great to be back in Hamilton. You have to know that Hamilton was the twin city of Shawnigan in the good old days. And I used to come here with my good friend John Monroe and my good and very shy Sheila Copps, who was my deputy prime minister and a great member of parliament. Alors, je suis content d'être avec vous. C'est un après-midi tout à fait nouveau pour moi. Ça fait des années que je n'ai pas fait ça. But uh, I have something to say today. A few things. A few things. You know, I'm here because last week the prime minister said that, you know, the liberals were good, not good administrators. You heard that. You heard that. Okay. But there is an old saying in Canada that still exists, Tory times are bad times. I've been around for a few years, and when I was a kid, you know, there was a terrible economic time under Bennett, and King had to restore prosperity. Mr. Pearson had to do the same thing for Mr. Diefenbaker. We had a big recession in the 90s, and the liberals are to be back with me to restore prosperity in Canada. You remember that? And now, Justin, you will have to do the same thing for Harper. You know, when we were the government, we had budget surplus. We had trade surplus. We had balance of payment surplus. Unemployment was lower than in the United States when we were there. Today, it's exactly the reverse. We're having a tr trade deficit. Balance of payments deficit. Shame. We're having budget deficit. Shame. And we're having more unemployment than in the United States. Shame. So, I say again, tourist time are bad times. And I know that he has the program, he has the team, and he will make the difference. So, I watch TV like all of you, and I saw what is happening in Europe and in Syria. And I wrote a letter to the newspaper yesterday, and I said, I'm very sad and very unhappy about the response of Canadians. You know, I've been around for a few years, you all know that. <laughs> that does not stop me from being on one ski <laughs> on water. But there is a large consensus in Canada that we should do something. You know, the, the mayor of Vancouver, the mayor of Montreal, the mayor of Toronto, the mayor of Calgary, the premier of British Columbia, the premier of Quebec, the premier of Ontario, the premier of Manitoba. A few hours ago, Rick Elliard, who was the chief of the army for Harper, gave hell to him in a way, you know, he didn't use the name, but it's what I understood because it is embarrassing. I've been around for a long time. I remember in the 40s, in the 50s, when uh, we had refugees coming in Canada 
from uh, Hungary. After that, we had the Ismailian and others from Uganda. And after that, we have the Vietnamese who came, the boat people. And when I was prime minister, we welcomed the Kosovar, five, more than 5,000 in one year. And, and there was no debate. There was no controversy. It was Canada opening the arms. It was what Canada was in those days. Yesterday I was in, in Ottawa. I was in Ottawa and I met a person who came as a refugee from Uganda. And I said, how many people who came from Uganda, the Ismailian, how many has caused any problem to Canada since they are arrived? None, zero. Same thing for the Hungarian. Same thing for, from the Vietnamese, we welcome there. You know, Mr. Harper, it is possible coming from Vietnam that there was a few communists in the gang? <laughs> it might be. <laughs> what do you know, I'm not a communist. So, you know, it's embarrassing because I'm traveling the world. And everywhere I go, they say, what's happening to Canada? <laughs> Where is the Canada that we have known? Where? You know, for the first time in the history of Canada, we lost a vote at the UN to have our seat at the Security hey! Council. Hey! You know, I met the former president of of Portugal one day and a former prime minister of Portugal in New York. And they said to me, we, did not, we don't believe that we defeated Canada. You know, I was, I was embarrassed. I was very embarrassed. I had to brag a little bit. I said, if I had been there, he would not have run. But, uh, <laughs> And it will be the same thing with Trudeau next time. was supposed to speak here, it was in the news, and already Mr. Mulcair has attacked me. Oh, I, I could talk about his economic program. You know, he's making promises in the billions of dollars, but he will not have a deficit. Come on, Canadians, Mr. Mulcair, know how to add. In grade one, they know that. <laughs> so it is not working. You have to be responsible in politics. And it's what Justin has done in the Liberal Party. They said, yes, we have a big infrastructure program deficit in Canada, and we'll fix it. And in doing that, we might have a deficit. Exactly what we done in 1993. You know, and it worked. Because we need to repair and we need to fix the infrastructure of Canada. Very often it's embarrassing to travel in Canada when we see that. So it is not spending, it's investment. <laughs> to borrow money for food is bad, but to borrow money for a house is good. So we have to keep that in mind. And you know, I spent a few years of my life talking about Canada. And, uh, you know, I heard 
that Mr. Mulcair was to abolish the Clarity Act. To pander. I'm not a panderer very much, you know that. <laughs> but it is completely irresponsible. You know, we had two referendums, I was involved in that. Two questions that were absolutely confusing. One was 110 words, are you for motherhood and against sin? I was tempted to vote yes. <laughs> so now I passed the law so that the people will know what they're doing. In those days, all the polls were telling us there's 20, 22, 23 persons who want to separate in Quebec, but not the rest. But when you say, I want a new deal, everybody wants a new deal. My wife sometimes wants a new deal. <laughs> But she had a, not a bad deal. We're married since 58 years. <laughs> and the other day, somebody was asking me, what is the recipe? I said, you put water in your wine. <laughs> if it's not working, you gave her the glass of wine and you drink the glass of water. <laughs> no, but, you know, we have to be honest with the people. He says that I'm talking about problems that don't exist. But I'm not the one who arose at first. Justin said that the other day. He is the one who said that St. jean Baptiste Day, the 24th of June this year. Yep. Pandering, I will abolish the, in the, the Clarity Act. My God, how irresponsible is that? But he says that in French, not in English. You know, and, and they say I'm not a Democrat because I say that to lose the country with one vote is not enough. You know, because my, in Quebec, you have a referendum. An old man, the night, the day before, forgot his glasses home. And he voted on the wrong line. <laughs> and you're more, no more a Canadian? Come on. You know, some years ago, the NDP wanted to change their name. Because you understand that the new Democratic Party, after 60 years, is not very new. <laughs> you know, a car of 60 years is not new at all. So they come to the good sense of having a new name. Liberal. Yeah. <laughs> that one's taken. And they failed because they needed two-thirds of the votes. And I checked two days ago their constitution. There are many provisions where they need two-thirds of the votes. It's the same thing with the Parti Québécois in Quebec. You know, to call a general assembly, they need two-thirds of the executive. And at one time, the leader of the PQ in Quebec, Monsieur Landry, had a confidential vote, a con vote of confidence. And he said, I need a clear mandate. He was for clarity at that time. <laughs> and he said, I want 80%. And he got on his seven to five and he resigned. And the guy said that I am a non-democrat because I need more than one vote to break Canada. And on top of it, moi je vais pas dire en anglais ici, en français au Québec. Je vais vous le répéter ici en français aussi. C'est irresponsable pour essayer de gagner des votes, de vouloir abolir la loi sur la clarté. Parce que, non, il faut être honnête, les gens au Québec ont le droit de savoir quelles seront les règles avant. Un chef de, de gouvernement doit prévoir, doit anticiper. Il ne doit pas être là pour seulement régler les problèmes après le coup. Et c'est irresponsable. Parce que un pays comme le Canada, on ne peut pas briser ça avec beaucoup de... On ne devrait pas briser ça avec beaucoup de facilité. Et comme je viens de dire en anglais, une majorité qualifiée, c'est normal. C'est normal. Les nouveaux partis démocratiques ont voulu changer leur nom il y a quelques années. 
parce que le nouveau Parti démocratique, après 60 ans, c'est pas bien ben nouveau. Et là, ils ont pas été capables, ça prenait les deux tiers des votes. Et j'ai vérifié dans la constitution des NPD, et il y a plusieurs articles qui demandent plus que la majorité simple, il demande des deux tiers. Alors, j'ai dit, on va continuer, je suis allé voir la constitution du, du Parti québécois. C'est la même chose. Pour bien des items, ils ont besoin des deux tiers des votes. Et nous, on va perdre un pays qu'on a bâti depuis 147 ans, qui est l'exemple dans le monde, avec quelqu'un qui a oublié ses lunettes à la maison. Ça ne marche pas. Alors, it is, if, when you want to be the leader of the party, you know, you, you don't pander, you do what is right and you tell the truth in both languages all the time. <laughs> Not only me. You know, when we voted this law on Parliament Hill, at that time, the NDP voted for us. And after that, after we passed the, before passing the bill, I had made a reference to the Supreme Court of Canada. And NDP government supported me to do that. And today, you know, they, they do that just to, because the luck of last election, they got some separatists elected with them. You know, it's, it's not the way to run a country and it is irresponsible, you know, to not, to claim that it's not a problem. Because the moment I'm talking to you, it's clear It's clear. The new leader of the, of the Parti Québécois said that the next election, it is about separation. So this is not in 10 years. It is in two years and a half from now. And the leader of the NDP party said it's not a problem. But he used it to try to get votes. It is your future that is gambling. Yeah. I'm not like that. Neither is Justin. And now, you know, I cannot speak to, I'm sorry, I'm a bit long, Justin. Uh, <laughs> you've earned it, Jean. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, the Tories had had that Justin was not ready. <laughs> no, I, I look up, I look up. He has been elected twice. Twice to Parliament, seven years, same thing than Harper. You're older than Joe Clark was when he was elected. And he got elected twice, but not long in government, of course. <laughs> uh, and after that, Kim Campbell was elected only once. And in a general election, and became prime minister. Not for very long, of course, but. And after that, You know, there was Brian Maroney, who has never been elected in a general election. He was elected in a by-election when he became the prime minister. Only one year in parliament. I'm sorry to tell you, Mr. Trudeau, that your father, too, was elected only once before he became prime minister. <laughs> And apparently, he became prime minister. <laughs> and, and a very good one. So, I think that Justin Trudeau is ready to be a good prime minister. <laughs> And I think that the Canadians are ready to have a new prime minister. <laughs> And that the Canadians are ready for a change. The Canadians are ready to get back their country. 
They are ready to be seen again as the land of freedom, the land of opportunity, the land of generosity, the land of sharing, the land of confidence among the people. When I look at you people, you are coming from all over the world. And you came to Canada, and Canada has been good for you, and you're good for Canada. So, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I would like to say thank you to be here. I want to tell you that I spent my life for Canada. And I want the Canada that we built together to come back. Yeah. Yeah. And vive le Canada! for that warm welcome uh, and thank you also to the 13 incredibly strong liberal candidates here today and their teams. But mostly thank you Prime Minister Chrétien for joining us and for your inspiring words. Vous savez, Monsieur Chrétien est, est, est quelqu'un d'extraordinaire qui a servi son pays, qui demeure toujours engagé, intéressé, passionné par l'avenir du pays, passionné par l'avenir du Parti libéral, passionné, passionné par l'avenir des Canadiens, et c'est ce qu'il a démontré encore une fois aujourd'hui. Merci, Merci. Now, I want to tell you a story that will no doubt sound familiar to more than a few of you. When I was a little younger, I was very lucky to travel across the world. I headed east in my early 20s, just about as far as I could go. And like so many Canadians along the way, I found I was learning as much about where I had come from, about where I was going. I'd already been taught about Canada's founding principles, the ones Wilfrid Laurier so aptly explained all the way back in 1877, not long after this nation was born. When he stood on the Plains of Abraham in Quebec City, Laurier saw what most others at his time did not, that Canada was a new kind of nation. Se trouvant sur les plaines d'Abraham, à Québec, Wilfrid Laurier s'était rendu compte d'une chose qui avait échappé à la plupart de ceux qui étaient autour de lui. Le Canada était devenu un pays unique. Debout, là où les Anglais et les Français avaient poursuivi des luttes anciennes au nom d'une nouvelle colonie, Wilfrid Laurier a parlé de ce qui s'était passé une fois ce combat terminé. Dans quel autre pays, s'était-il demandé, un monument ferait-il une place égale aux deux adversaires d'une telle bataille, où les noms des adversaires jouiraient de la même reconnaissance, du même respect. Standing where English and French had fought old battles in the name of a new colony, Laurier spoke about what happened after the fight was over. In what other country, Laurier asked, would a monument commemorate both sides of such a battle, where the names of each side would be equally honored and equally respected. In that moment, Laurier wasn't looking back at a war between the English and the French. He was looking forward to a united country. You see, 
That's the vision we've all inherited since. The idea that we must look forward with a shared purpose. And generation after generation of new Canadians have renewed that inheritance over and over again. It is this leadership and this vision of Canada that has made us a nation with two official languages, that has given us our shared institutions, that gave us our Charter of Rights, a document that guarantees freedom from every possible culture, religion, and ethnicity. Cette dualité qui cimente les fondations du Canada a fait de nous, nous une nation avec deux langues officielles. Elle nous a donné nos institutions. Elle nous a donné la charte des droits qui protège les libertés de tous, peu importe leur culture, leur origine, leur religion. That's what I learned as I traveled. As I learned about the dozens upon dozens of countries that I visited, their customs and their traditions, I also learned about Canada. I learned about Canada's unique sense of inclusion that is so rare and so admired around the world. I learned that to dry our drive to always move forward, to progress as a people and as a nation, has always been because of our openness. Yeah. That we are, not, uh, we are strong not in spite of our individual differences, but because of them. But, but we should remember that this did not happen by accident. It took hard work. Many of us remember where we were 20 years ago on that night in 1995 that Canada nearly changed forever. I was in that fight along with many, many others. We sat on the brink of losing everything that generations of everyday Canadians, not just prime ministers, had worked so hard to build, unity. The divisions that referendum sown and the pain that it caused Canadians must not be repeated. And that is why, after the Supreme Court required a clear majority on a clear question on succession, Prime Minister Chrétien's government adopted the Clarity Act. <laughs> to protect the rights of Quebecers, to protect all we have built together. But now, Thomas Mulcair wants to make separation easier. No. Mulcair and the NDP believe that all that's required to break up this federation we have worked so hard to preserve for nearly 150 years is a single vote. No. Mulcair has even tried to repeal the Clarity Act in the House of Commons. In in doing so, he is not just backtracking on the promise we've made, the progress we've made over the past 15 years. He's also backtracking on his own party's history. Alexa McDonough, Roy Romano, Bill Blakey, Ed Broadbent all supported the Clarity Act. <laughs> Mulcair? He wants to roll the dice. He wants to put separation back on the table and turn the clock back 20 years. Which means, which means all of Thomas Mulcair's experience in politics has simply taught him one thing, to play politics with anything and everything. Yeah. Including the unity of this country to gain a few votes from separatists. That's not leadership. Now, 
Tom Mulcair will tell you that he remembers that night in 1995 as well as anyone else. So he should know better than most the consequences of what he is recklessly proposing. So I don't know about you, but I think that any prime minister or anyone who wants to be prime minister should be ready to fight to keep Canada together. They shouldn't make it easier to tear it apart. It's a prime minister's job to protect our unity. It's a prime minister's job to build a better Canada for everyone. Et l'unité nationale n'est pas seulement importante au niveau de nos valeurs, elle est importante sur le plan économique. Que ce soit dans le milieu des affaires ou de la culture, le Canada et le Québec ont besoin l'un de l'autre pour prospérer. Nous devons respecter nos différences, mais aussi travailler ensemble pour atteindre nos objectifs communs. Pensez à tout ce que nous avons accompli depuis le jour où Laurier a parlé des principes fondateurs du Canada ce jour-là à Québec. Avec raison, les Canadiens s'attendent de leur premier ministre qu'il travaille pour l'unité du pays et non pas qu'il rende sa division plus facile. My friends, Fighting for national unity doesn't just make good sense, it's essential for economic stability, too. Whether it's in business or in culture, Canada and Quebec need one another to prosper. We must respect the differences we have, but we must work together to achieve our common objectives. Think about all that we have done since Laurier spoke about Canada's founding principles that day in Quebec City. How we've come together to fight for peace. How we've tackled injustice together. How we've prospered as a nation united. This is the most harmonious, diverse country on earth. And I believe... And I believe it is every Prime Minister's job to make sure it stays that way. Après dix longues années, nous connaissons les conservateurs. Divisés pour mieux régner, les Canadiens en ont assez. Il est temps pour un réel changement. Il est temps pour un leadership honnête, ambitieux et rassembleur. Thomas Mulcair ne peut pas donner ça aux Canadiens parce qu'il est fait sur le même moule que M. Harper. C'est la vieille façon de faire la politique. My friends, after 10 long years, of, uh, 10 long years we know what we get with the Harper Conservatives. Divisive politics that pit one region against another. Divisive language that encourages Canadians to be fearful of one another. Canadians have had enough. change that Mulcair can't bring because his experience in politics has taught him to play politics with everything. I know we can do a lot better. My friends, this is Canada. And we know what Laurier knew. We know what Prime Minister Chrétien knows. Better is always possible. Thank you.